What's the word, y'all? It's finally time for me to get y'all my official Kenny for real all-star ballot. Nope, I should probably word that better. Because the Kenny for all-star ballot sound like I'm at the vote for Shay or Joel and B. No, 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 no. The Kenny for real all-stars is something that I started a few years ago. The idea behind it, because on this channel, at least... The inception of this channel was us talking about random things around basketball that's not necessarily mainstream. We've kind of steered away from that recently because brother got bills to pay and I got to talk about the mainstream topics. But it was it was the idea of the players that won't get talked about or the players that do the little things that, that cause teams to win. That's really like the only criteria when I really think about it. Um, it is also my list, so I, I fumbled the rules. I changed some stuff. At the end of the day, we just gonna talk about some people that I think deserve some more recognition. That's that's basically what this video is. Today's video is brought to you by Price Picks. Hit the link in the description, download the Price Picks app, and use code Kenny because they're matching all deposits up to $100 for new players. Price Picks is daily fantasy that is just you versus the numbers. You pick some of your favorite or least favorite athletes. You pick something like points, rebounds, assists. You see the number, and you decide if you think the person's gonna have more or less than that number. Of course, it's an NBA channel, but it's a lot deeper than NBA. The Super bowl is coming up very soon so you can you can play with that i can get australian basketball league i can get the nhl college basketball soccer csgo we got tennis league of legends here's a hypothetical entry where i say that i think that anthony Harris is going to have more points dear fox gonna have more assists and kyle coops is going to have more points rebounds and assists you can play in a matter of seconds so hit the link in the description down the price picks app and use code kenny please play responsibly so originally i wanted to try to get east versus west just like in real life it's not gonna happen we, we just we just gonna talk we just gonna talk you know what i'm saying we fumbling the rules because this is my all-star game starting off in the western crimes these are the people that i think will be kenny for all-stars based on the first 60 65 percent of the nba season number one guard position kevin herter and number two kc I think Kevin Hurd is starting to give his flowers a little bit. The whole uh, Sacramento Kings team is because Demont Sabonis should be a lock for the All-Star game. De'Aaron Fox is still in the conversations. And I think people are realizing the impact that Kevin Herter has on this team because he's been ridiculous. He's still shooting crazy well from the field and from three. The dribble handoffs between him and Demont Sabonis is some of the best in basketball. He's got to make this list from a guy that in Atlanta, we saw him be good because he gave, what, 27 points to Seth Curry in that game seven that helped the Atlanta Hawks get to the conference finals he did that but he's way more than he was back then and he's still relatively young i think 25 years old kcp has been so smooth for the entire course of his career but he is the perfect guard slash player to play alongside nikola Jokic. i can't explain it any deeper than that he's gonna hit his shots he gonna cut hard he gonna play defense those are all the recipes you need for a quality player around Jokic. number three and number four are both rookies so it's kind of cheating to have rookies on the list but it again it, it is my list i don't watch any college basketball again i say that every time i mention rookies because i think it is is important for the people that are new around this channel so my first introduction to jeremy so so chan or tari eason came like a couple days before the draft when i was supposed to do a little bit of draft work because it was my job to do a live stream about this stuff and those two people really piqued my interest when I was doing my my individual uh, studies on them and they've carried that over to the NBA Jeremy just had his first 30 point game of his career and they end up losing because it's the Spurs and that's kind of what they in for but he showed a lot of our offensive growth already this season the fact that he went from a dude that was shooting I don't know I'm gonna make some percentage of 30 percent from the free throw line when you shoot him with two hands and in the middle of the season he's like okay I'm gonna change to one hand and he got it up to 60 something percent just shows how dedicated he is to the growth of himself as a player and you're seeing that growth from his first nba game versus his last again where he had 30 points so i'm, I'm watching him more than i'm watching the spurs collectively because i like to see his steady progression already in his young nba career before the nba draft my homies told me tar is the type of dude that you're gonna love kenny and they're absolutely right he is that's all I can really say. He hustles. His splits ain't going to be too great. He's a rookie player, but he hustles and he plays hard. And those are the type of dudes I really care about. And I found out that his OG follows me on Twitter at a, randomly. I just found out she does. And I had to hit her with the follow back. Uh, I love to see her live tweet and Rockets games when her son is doing good. It just reminds me of moms when I used to hoop. Obviously not at the same level. How excited she was whenever I did anything. So it's just, it's just wholesome content. Next guy. He might be the captain of this Kenny Freer all-star list. It's Josh Green. 
I, I've, I've been on the Josh Green fan club to, since like the beginning of last season. I can't say I was there for his rookie year, but I, I joined in last year at the top of it. I ain't wait to the playoffs like a lot of people. Yeah, through the first month or so, he was shooting like 52% from three. And then he had five games before his injury where he ain't hit nothing. So they've got his percentages down and he's back and he's up and down right now. But he's another one of those dudes that just does a lot of the right stuff. I feel like that's time to describe a lot of people. Off the bench. We have Isaiah Joe. Isaiah Joe, Kate, man, listen. Isaiah Joe was a part of the 76ers, couldn't get PT or nothing. They gave him away to the OKC Thunder. And not only is he playing phenomenally, he's doing something that not a lot of people on the team are doing, and that's hitting the three point shot at the high clip, but he's becoming a piece that seems like he's going to be a part of the, the core of the OKC Thunder. This is a dude that was given away a couple months ago. I made a video a few weeks ago. Um, in my car, I was driving home from the podcast. We were talking about Shea, and I got into my car, and I still wanted to talk more about Shea. And I was saying in that video that the fact that Shea Gilgis is averaging 30 points per game when he has, like, no respected shooters on his team. Now, people took that out of context because respected versus good shooters are two different things. Respected shooters are Steph Curry. Respected shooters are Kevin Herter. We're like, we gon' we going to send a lot of him. Um, Joe, Isaiah Joe doesn't have that just yet, but he's one of the best shooters in basketball. Eventually, he's going to be a respected shooter. And it's going to open the game up more for some of the other people on the team. Terrence Mann was given the starting spot over Reggie Jackson and John Wall. And I think he's starting 26 games in a season. And his, his stats versus a starter versus coming off the bench is dramatically different. He just feels more fluid, and the teams look a lot better when he's at the lead guard. It's not like he's this, this playmaker or anything. I think he's only averaging like two and a half assists as a starter. But the team just feels better when he's starting. So he's got to be a, a Kenny for All-Star. He's kind of been here since the big game versus Utah. I'm be honest with you. Dang, I didn't realize how many rookies were on my list. The next two are rookies. Walker Kessler, I think he's getting enough recognition right now, so we won't go too in deep. But the fact that this man's already one of the premier rim protectors in basketball in his first year in the NBA is insane. We don't really see, I think the two positions in basketball that are harder to adjust to coming out of college is the point guard position and the center position is mostly because of the speed, right? The speed and the athleticism of the opposing people. But the fact that he came into this league and he's adjusted perfectly for all the athletes in this game is ridiculous. Kevin O'Connell's tweeting that he was better than, um, I forget who he's going. I think it might have been Yusuf Nurkic already, and I was like, damn, got a point. You know, he's a rookie. He's a rookie. And the next dude is J-Dub. I, 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 listen, we've made it. We've, we've talked at length about J-Dub, Jalen Williams over there in OKC. He, he just runs the fast break like crazy. I watch him. I see a shot go up. I know he is booking it. And, and, and there's nobody that's going to catch him. His finishing and transition is crazy. And then a couple nights ago, he had two threes late in the fourth quarter to help them win a game. And I know he's like a, a, a career 29% three-point shooter through the first couple months of his, uh, his career. But he had two in that game, and it was crucial. I, and I love to see um players like him man for real next we got Nas Reed if we found out that Nas Reed may be on the trade block and it makes sense because he's going to be an expensive ish player next season because I think the league is realizing that Nas Reed as an offensive player is ridiculous for his size and his role a lot to be desired on the defensive side of the ball but if you need somebody to come off your bench and give buckets Nas Reed is doing that from all three levels as a center and I like it I'm very curious to see where he ends up at I don't even know what team should be making a trade for him because I don't know at this point if he's a legitimate starter because of his defense. Uh, but he's definitely going to give you quality minutes and score a bunch of points. The last guy we're going to talk about at length here in the Western Conference is Nazir Little. So last year, Nazir got a lot of PT. Once the Portland Trailblazers decide, okay, Dame is dealing with abdominal injury, we're going to see what we got with our young players. We found out that Anthony Simons is a bucket. And we found out that Nazir Little is good enough for now. Good enough for us to want to keep him around. Unfortunately for him, you know, he started off the season and then he got injured with, I think it was a hip thing and something like that. He missed like a month and a half of basketball. So he missed all of December and half of January. But when I've been watching this year a little over the last couple games since he's been back, I'm seeing a lot of things that I really like. Now, defensively, we knew Nasir Little can do that type of stuff. But the thing that is elevating him right now is the fact that he's shooting 42% from three. 42%. On two and a half attempts, so the value is not super crazy, but he's hitting them. And I think he could just add something a little bit different for the, the Portland Trail Blazers because Josh Hart, as good of an NBA player he is, he doesn't shoot three-pointers, which means that me as a coach, I'm going to let him just do what he has to do. And I think the Nazir Little is getting a lot of open shots too because he's a 42% three-point shooter right now, but throughout the course of his career, he's been a bad shooter. So he's getting a lot of open looks, but as long as he's making them, I mean, what, what can you say? 
Josh Hart is getting open looks, but instead of taking them, you know what I'm saying? He rather take the long two. He rather go fast something at the rim, which is fine. But Nazir Little being able to shoot, if this is him, just opens up the game a lot more for Dame and Anthony. Other dudes, Tyus Jones, Dyson Daniels, and Thomas Bryant are also Kenny for an all-star uh, um, people. I just don't, I'm just not going to talk about it because we, we already spent a lot of time on the people I was. So shout out to them. Thomas Bryant, it sucks that since Anthony Davis came back, he don't really get PT anymore. But he held it down for the Lake Show um, while AD was out. So he deserves a medal for that. Let's move on to the Eastern Conference. Um, I didn't realize I was spending this much. Eastern Conference guard one is the Anthony Melton. The Anthony Melton has been a Kenny for All-Star for the last two seasons. So shout out to him back to back. Is he the only back to back? So far, he's the only back to back. Man. Anthony Melton, keep doing your thing. Um, he's been one of the more consistent players in the league. Um, obviously, he's not giving you 20 or 30 or anything like that, but he had been so consistent when the Philadelphia 76ers needed him to, to do that because when Tyrese Maxey went out, it felt like, oh, man, what are they going to do next? He came in. He's their best perimeter defender outside of Matisse Stiebel, who plays sometimes, who play, who don't play other times. And then since Tyrese Maxey been back, they were like, okay, DeAnthony be doing his thing. We kind of like the different pace that Tyrese Maxey gives us off the bench. We okay with DeAnthony Melton starting for us. And it's been working. They, they, they're the hottest team in basketball right now. They just beat the Denver Nuggets the other night. So they've been doing great things at the Anthony Melton again two years in a row. Guard number two is Quentin Grimes. I didn't know much about Quentin Grimes coming out of college, but I did go to the Elite Eight. And I got the receipts that I was at the Elite Eight or Final Four, whatever, whatever he was in, in Indianapolis a few years ago. I took a picture of the Jumbotron that had uh, Quentin Grimes up there, and I said, P, sending it to my boy Pierre. Pierre, he nice. And Pierre's like a draft guy. He was like, oh, yeah, that's Quentin Grimes. He's going to be real nice. Little did Pierre know Quentin Grimes is going to get drafted to his favorite team. You know what I'm saying? And I asked Pierre the other day, who, um, who, who is your favorite Nick? He he said Quentin Grimes is not even close. He got he got uh, Julius Randle playing at an all-star level. Jalen Brunson playing at an all-star level. But his favorite is Quentin Grimes. He brings an intensity defensively, and we know he can shoot. Forward spot number one is Patrick Williams. I ain't, ain't going to get y'all the Chicago Bulls Patrick Williams thing. But I, I'm loving to see his progression throughout the season because early in it, he, you know, that he was talking about how he was training with DeMar DeRozan this offseason. All of us Bulls fans like, oh, he's training with DeMar. He's about to come in aggressive. And he wasn't aggressive. He just wasn't aggressive. And it blew it blew my mind because I know that he's a talented NBA player. But he lacks aggression. Even now, he still lacks aggression. But we're seeing it go up and up and up. We're seeing him have the defensive impact. And we're seeing him take more shots. And that's all I really want from Pat. The, the Bulls season is over for me. But if Patrick Williams keep doing this thing, I'm excited. From a current Bull to a former Wendell Carter. Oh, he's a two-time Kenny for All-Star, ladies and gentlemen. He is. I got a couple more two-timers. Oh, man, I didn't realize he's a conference. Just, people just get the, the legacy ballots, I feel like. The next guy's TJ McConnell. TJ McConnell. Oh I, oh, I hate this man so much that he, because he's so so much of a nuisance. You know what I'm saying? I hate him when he went against the Bulls the other night and he clamped Zach Levine up. I hated it with, with a passion, but I respected the hell out of it. And that's what he do. Next one is Yuta, the shooter. Yuta Watanabe is still killing the game, shooting almost 50% from 3.0. What more can I really say? A two-time Kenny for All-Star, Grant Williams. We talked about him a bunch. Shout out to the homie. Another rookie on this list, AJ Griffin. I just, I don't understand why AJ don't get 25 minutes per game. It's actually gone down from the last time we've talked about him. He just don't, I don't understand. I know he's a rookie, Nate, but he's just one of those dudes that feels like he's in the right spot at all times. He rarely makes mistakes and he hits shots. And he plays defense. Like, what more can you want from a young player? I understand the Atlanta Hawks are trying to win and stuff, but he helps you win. He got two home, uh, I almost said home runs. He got two game winners this season. Two, this, this, this is his rookie year. He got two game winners already, man. And the last two people on the Kenny for All-Star ballot is uh, Mark Williams, who still got a lot of work to do on the offensive side of the ball. But when he's on the court defensively, you feel his impact. Another rookie. And then um, Robin Lopez. Uh, because because I like a hook, good old hook shot, and he don't play a lot, but when he play, he going to give you one clean hook shot per. And now that I'm looking at my notes, I had um, Patrick Williams, Grant Williams, Mark Williams, and Jalen Williams all on my list. I'm just missing Jalen Williams. And then that, is that all the Williamses in the league? I think so. Anyway, that's the Kenny for All-Star ballot. Let me know who you would have on your own personal one if you do stuff like this. You might not be a weirdo like me, though.